Hello, this is David Nutt. I'm chair of Drug Science. And I want to welcome you to our Ask David Anything series of questions. So Matt from Solihull asks, in your previous reports detailing sensible evidence-based drugs policy, cocaine was one of the drugs you categorically could not condone legalizing in any form due to its social and physical harms. Given the rise in production and supply in recent years, alongside the increasingly horrific effects it's having on Latin America and other parts of the world through organized crime, have you at all reconsidered your stance on the drug status with a wider world view? Well, Matt, that's actually a very, a very good question. Cocaine has always sat at a very difficult nexus between the drugs which are very, very harmful, like heroin, where one in 20 people who ever use it will die of it, fentanyl, which might be even higher, crack cocaine and crystal meth, which are more harmful uh, than cocaine, and drugs which are acceptably harmful, if we can use that term, such as alcohol. So actually, in the first drug analysis comparison of harms paper we published in The Lancet in, in 2010, the harms of cocaine to the user were not so different from those of, if anything, they were a bit less than those uh, of alcohol. And the social harms were considerably less because, of course, cocaine is not anything like as widely used as uh, alcohol. Now, at that time, you know, it was uh, difficult to know quite what would happen if there was a much broader, much wider use of cocaine. It is plausible that individual harms would be more obvious or more severe if, we, if it was wider used. Maybe that the people using cocaine at present are protected against some of its harms because, for instance, they, you know, they're wealthier, living in the city, working in the city, you know, good health backgrounds, you know, good food, etc. So there is a risk that... Uh, cocaine, if it was more widely used, could actually become more harmful. But I'm very aware of the point you're making about South America, and we know now that prohibition of cocaine in South America is particularly driving a vast amount of organized crime and also a lot of political disruption and instability. And for that reason, a, a number of people, uh, including Steve Rolls, one of our drug science experts, is in the process of working with Latin American governments to see if there's any way in which we could break the monopoly, the black market monopoly on, on cocaine by perhaps making some forms of cocaine, obviously the hydrochloride, available in a regulated fashion. We haven't done the proper analysis yet to, to know whether a regulated market would provide better health benefits and the current prohibitionist or decriminalization models. I would expect it would, and hopefully if we can get some funding, we can do that in the next few years. So I'm, I think it may well become the case that cocaine could end up being available in some kind of regulated market, probably start in South America, but then if that turns out to be successful, if it significantly reduces crime and reduces harm, then it's not implausible it could also be rolled out eventually into countries like the Netherlands and then hopefully to the UK. If you like my answer, please leave a review and a rating on your podcast app. For tickets for our live podcast on psychedelics on the evening of the 13th of November in London, go to the drugscience.org.uk website. You'll also find a lot of very useful information there. And of course, you can tweet me at ProfDavidNutt or hashtag AskDavidAnything to get your questions answered.